Chapter 27 When he returned to the bunks, Dominic found Francesco and Antonio talking about what they wanted to be when they grew up. When I grow up in America, I want to be a very fat man, Antonio said, puffing out his cheeks. That's funny, Dominic told him. Most people don't want to grow up to be fat. If I am fat, Antonio explained, I can live for a long time without food, and my stomach won't hurt, and I'll never be hungry. I think even fat people get hungry, Dominic told him. When I grow up in America, I will have a big house and a big family, Francesco declared, and my firstborn son will be named Salvatore. They all grew quiet at the mention of Salvatore. After the fifth day, their conversations turned from what things they would buy for each other to what f kinds of foods they would eat. For their meals now consisted of the hard biscuits and smelly gray soup that the crew served from big wooden tubs. By the second week, even the drinking water that the ship provided tasted so bad that many people refused to drink it. I can smell tobacco in it, Francesco said, making a face as he took a drink, and I can taste it, too. They must have reused the cask. Dominic winced as he spit out, spit out the foul-tasting liquid. I think we're going to get sick from this water. Our stomach cramps started right after we drank it. He thought of Salvatore and his stomach pains. Nervously, he remembered how quickly his, wife, his life had ebbed away. Would it be the same for them? Once again, the old man's words came back to him. Your courage is there, right alongside of your fear. Was there enough courage there to see him through this nightmare? As afraid as he was, he also began to feel angry. Why doesn't someone complain? he muttered. They shouldn't treat us like animals. Complain? Francesco repeated from the bottom bunk. Who to? The shipping company? And what do you suppose they would do? They'd put us off at the next port, or maybe they wouldn't even wait. Maybe they'd just open the hatch and give us a good shove. Do you see how some of the sailors treat us? To them, we are no better than dogs. No, it's not wise to complain. We need to get to America, and if that means we must drink dirty water, then that's what we'll do. I just hope we don't die before we get there, Dominic moaned, clutching his cramping stomach. His eyes began to wander the room, and he looked from bunk to bunk at his fellow passengers. He could read the exhaustion on their faces, the weariness in their slack jaws. He could see the sickly green tint to their complexions, the white of their knuckles as they clutched the iron bars of their berths. He could hear the moans and groans and players and lamentations that accompanied each loud creak of the ship's wooden walls. But try as he might, he couldn't hear anger, the anger that he would, ex would have expected to accompany such miserable conditions. No one was demanding his money back. No one was threatening to sue the shipping company. They seemed to accept the misery as a part of their payment to reach America. He tried closing his eyes, but that only made the continual rocking seem worse and the stench grow stronger. This lasted for the remainder of the trip until the days and nights began to run into each other and he lost track of all time. And then, on the fifteenth day, word came down to them that land had been sighted. Hoots and cheers filled the air as the exciting news was passed from bunk to bunk. High spirits spread through the ship like wildfire. People kissed, hugged, laughed, and cried. They had spotted land, American land. With trembling hands, Francesco shook Antonio awake. America, Antonio croaked, rubbing the sleep from his eyes. Are we really going to see America? Yes, Antonio, Francesco laughed as he pulled out two shirts from his cloth pack, and we are going to look our best for our new country. Francesco and Antonio changed into their clean shirts. Then Francesco reached into the sack and pulled out the remaining one. Everyone grew quiet at the sight of it. Dominic looked down at the small, worn shirt in Francesco's hands, and he knew what the others were thinking. He knew they were thinking of Salvatore and how he should be here to wear the shirt and to see America. Go on, Francesco said, holding the shirt out to Dominic. Put it on. Salvatore would have wanted you to wear it. 
Dominic quickly undid the little wooden buttons. He slipped his arms into the sleeves. He knew that if he were to wear such a threadbare garment in his own time, kids would really make fun of him. But as he looked down at the stained shirt now and tried to smooth out the wrinkles with his dirty hands, Dominic felt as if he had never worn anything finer.